What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it!
Good evening, world. This is the NECC week five, I believe. I am staged and I am so incredibly pleased to be joined by the individual who turns college carball into Rocket League, Novanta. I thought you were kidding when you said you were going to say that. What's going on, Stan? <laughs> this is NECC week five. We're in the throes of the season. No more preseason form. I can't wait. I can't wait for this either. We are going to be presented with some immensely high level Rocket League, at least high stakes Rocket League, yeah. because this is the week that these two teams will not be walking away from undefeated. That's right. Two Titans, Kansas Wesleyan and Central Methodist White, both of them undefeated will be one of them will be leaving with a loss on their record. Yeah, both of them are undefeated, so you know something has to give tonight. It's a best of five series, but we're going to see a lot of back and forth action when it's all said and done. My money right now is on Kansas Wesleyan. They had a little bit of a stronger run with a like, arguably a harder, more difficult opponent schedule, but that doesn't mean that CMU has no shot. They're a formidable team in their own right, so we're going to see it play out in the pitch. I would see K uh, Central Methodist take it away, though. I mean, this is the uh, first season that they've had a second team. So having a bit more of the larger roster means that you've got more of a talent pool at your school to pull from. So I'm really hoping that uh, we can see them move forward. But you're right. Kansas Wesleyan is an absolutely monstrous team. And regardless of who takes this, I think we are all going to win because, well, it's going to be some great action to watch. I actually agree with you. Once an organization able to have a second team or even a practice squad that does have a situation of iron and sharpening iron, we're talking about in-houses, we're talking about the healthy competitive nature within an organization that does make everything a bit more crisp on the field. But I don't know. Something's in the air, man. I don't think it's going to be lopsided. I really think it's going to be like a, a giant living monster battle in the middle of downtown Tokyo. And I got a front row seat and my popcorn stage. I don't know who's Godzilla or who's Mothra or what the other kind of monster movie we're going to see, but I just know we're going to have rubble outside of it. Yeah, five minutes and it's game one of a five game set. All right, starting off early in the set, Golden chipping this one away, Maverick. And oh, no, saved early on. I actually don't have audio in my ears, but that's great. Brodell taking out the midfield, that kiddo. Yep. Out to Maverick once more. Golden chips it away from his own net. And this is looking a little bit back foot for KWU so far, but they just need to get out of their backfield and they've got a lot of room ahead of them. You see Kansas in the blue and we've been talking about this before you we went live about how strong that team was. I first with a shot on with Golden getting the assist. I'm seeing how great Golden has been a sign out play for the squad and it makes quick work with the long range pass of diversity who cleans up the mess. I'm suddenly just really thrown off by the fact that I made a settings change and suddenly I can't hear, but that's all well and good. That doesn't affect what you guys see out there and doesn't affect the caliber of action that we get. Golden chipping this one downfield. KW already taking away and getting that advantage. Brodell in the corner, letting it be very, very patient. Chips it infield. There's a player there. Oh, just off the corner crossbar. And now CMU getting the opportunity away, a little bit of a breakaway, but Golden's there to break it up out to his own corner. Can play this one nice and patient again. KWU definitely taking hold of their momentum and of the pace of this game, holding control out of their own corner. KWU, usually you would think of two teams that are undefeated will take a time to suss each other out, but KWU is doing the easy work, getting open uh, defensive opportunities, excuse me, offensive opportunities, slicing the defense of CMU and making quick work. Diversity had one goal and one shot on frame that was went awry, and not two minutes have elapsed in game one. Not even with two minutes gone, like you said, Brodell pushing that one deep into CMU's side once more. Gansden finally moving this one away. A lot of control there, loses the 50-50, and unfortunately it's out to the third man for CM use. Going to have that go straight into diversity, and now Golden with the shot opportunity saved by Gansen. There's been something cool to be said about Golden's control, able to use a side roll, but didn't work for, out for him in that opportunity, but I have a feeling there's going to be a lot more on the plate in the future. 
Ganson's definitely doing a lot of work here for CMU, trying to get the offensive moving, but they're not going to have the opportunity now deep in their own territory. Diversity peppering the net, creating pressure, and Golden just off the crossbar. No opportunity seized just yet, but starting to stretch that zone defense from CMU. You can tell that Golden is nipping at the heels of goal. That's two uncontested shots on goals. If he is not locked down or she is not locked down or they are not locked down, it's going to be a hard night for CMU. Absolutely. This is just a rough and tumble match. Even though we don't see a lot of that physicality, the demo play, there's a lot of the rotations. There's a lot of this quick action, a little bit of a chip out there towards the side of KWU. Golden picking this one up out of the midfield, tries to set it infield, tackled out of the way. Diversity in place to move this one downfield. That kiddo has the opportunity, sends it down into KWU territory. Looked like that kiddo had a shot in the right side of flame, and, and it did not go the way she wanted it uh, to link up with her partner in the mid pitch. But that doesn't say there's an opportunity there. I think a lot of those long rowing passes will benefit CMU. That's right. This long ball, as long as they can get somebody in position or start getting their placement a little bit better. Ooh, Gamzen out of the side field, setting up the equalizer, stealing it straight off of that passing play. I'm going to call myself a psychic. That kiddo with a shot, and it was clean. She shot it off the wall and let it right in front, and now we're level with less than two minutes to go in game one. Back to the kickoff. Brodell squaring up. Gets a little bit of advantage, but Ganson will pick this one up for CMU. And once again, out in midfield, that kiddo, she has the good reflexes to get that out to the corner, but Golden still holds on to it. Looks for the floor pinch. Not going to find it just yet. Diversity picks up the pass off of that and skies out towards midfield. Golden in a clumsy opportunity, but does get a piece of the ball. Dishes it right out to the CMU corner. One more passing play out to Diversity. Diversity has to fall back. And this means that KWU is on the back foot. CMU gets their offensive. What will they do with it? Well, the whole game, it seemed like C C uh, w sorry, KWU was working a faster pace, a more aggressive pace, and finally CMU has started to catch up. And not a moment too soon, really. You're tied game and about a minute to go. Why not go for a little extra sauciness? One of the things that we see there is a little bit of that style coming out. Maverick on with the high flying play, trying to get out of their own backfield. CMU still trying to get the clear away. It feels like whenever it's into KWU's territory, there's just not any follow up, and KWU is giving so much space, but they take advantage of that space to save it. Maverick getting it out from their net. That kiddo unfortunately whiffs. Gans in there to pick it up, and a solid midfield touch. And there's just not any speed to the ball there. Maverick is going to pick this one up. One more opportunity. Who's going to be taking this one away before we start approaching that overtime? So there was that first stage in CMU's counterattack of picking up the pace and being a lot more aggressive. But now phase two has to be the accuracy. They're getting those opportunities. They're putting their shoulders down. They're being more aggressive when it comes to the last third of the net. They have not been that fortunate and has um, essentially ensured them a overtime situation. Just need to get the ball down. There's still the opportunity. KWU has the bit of the aggression here, trying to get this Brodell, but now it's just going to spike down. Overtime it is, Novanta. You are, in fact, a psychic. <laughs> I do try. Usually, Castle's Curse is my bread and butter, but this one is working on my favorite today. Oh, that kiddo! Ripping that one off the sidewall. Five seconds down. That's all you need. The 50-50 Brodell whips that, and kiddo there to pick it up. This is why that kiddo is so valuable to that squad. It's usually, they're usually unmarked in the mid pitch and the one goal and even the second goal using that space to her advantage is what put CMU ahead in game one. I think Kansas has a, a little explain to do of how to let this game slip away because they were the stronger team in the first half of this one. Definitely. So one of the things that I want to talk about, though, just as we look back on this match is how much space they're giving each other and how much respect there is. Now, I know this is collegiate esports. You have to give each other a lot of respect. You're playing against very high caliber players. But one of the things is you've got to force the opponents to give you respect. You can't expect them to hand it to you. Right. And in this case, there's so much open field. There's so much time with the ball out there that... Mm -hmm. I feel like you've got to kind of cut those rotations a little bit, get a little bit mean and take away some of the assumption of there being respect for the play, not the player. 
Right. Being mean will definitely benefit CMU a tad more, especially in the first half of that game. Golden had a lot of opportunities, essentially unmarked in the mid pitch and in the top third to have shots on frame. It didn't work out because shooting accuracy wasn't to Golden's favor, but you're absolutely right. A more aggressive strategy would definitely benefit CMU more. And if you're Kansas, it's not that bad. You can actually use aggression to your advantage. I really want more out of Brodell. The first game did not show what Brodell can do uh, in this place in the squad. And there's still time to make that up. And so let's hope it happens in game two. Yeah, game one for KWU, definitely on golden shoulders, but we saw a lot out of diversity in Brodell as well. If they start picking this up, KWU could be the force to be reckoned with, but they've got a bit of catching up to do as CMU starting this one off. Maverick pummels it downfield solidly in KWU's side. Diversity tries to clear this one away over top one. That kiddo nowhere near the play. The demo, though. Shot opportunity taken away by Ganzen. Ganzen passing out towards Diversity, unfortunately turns over the ball. A little bit of friendly fire between Maverick and Kiddo near their own goal, but Maverick does manage to just barely squeak that one away with a booming clear. Looks like Brodell and Golden have an idea on the right flank, and they've been favoring that so far in this uh, opening seconds of the second game, and maybe it might work out for them, but I don't think so. I do think CMU has got them figured out. They might have to come up with a new strategy. Or not. <laughs> KW gets that counterattack. That's all you really need, though. I mean, you talk about needing a new strategy, but I think that you said, you know, game one all about sussing them out. KWU came out stronger, but then they got to get the download going, and that's exactly what we see there. Just getting the counterattacks, getting the pressure, getting a little bit of the slow, respectful ball that's able to punish some of these plays. Golden, oh my lord, that 50-50 going all the way downtown. Maverick with a monstrous save right on the goal line. Yeah, a shot like that broke down both offensive and defensive plans. Everyone was caught ball watching for a second there. <laughs> Feels like uh, a little bit like uh, minor league soccer, like uh, youth soccer, where it's just, okay, where's it going to go? Where's it going to land? All right, time to swarm it. Right. Oh, nice shot there. Saved out by Diversity. Ganzen pummeling that one towards the net. Oh my lord, golden air dribble from downtown. Air mail for 2-0. Okay, technically it's a known goal, but that's an asterisk there. Golden with a long range travel. Take it first class, causing the Gans season own goal, but who cares? Doubles the lead 2-0 in favor of Kansas Wesleyan. You talk about traveling right there, Novanta. I think if we were playing basketball, that would definitely get called by the refs. But in this game, there is no such violation. <laughs> Absolutely. Golden down to diversity, and KWU feels like they've got everything this game. Golden in again, upper 90 from the corner. Well, I guess Golden was not satisfied with that game one performance and quickly showing the world of why he is or they are one of the best players on that squad. Three nils of scoreline and not two minutes have gone by in the second game. This doesn't look at all like the same team that we saw in game one. You said they've got to make strategical adjustments. I think this is just a matter of making mechanical adjustments. This is just getting the hands warm and KWU suddenly making a statement with so much more room to go, though. CMU can bring this back. They just need to turn it up now. And that's not it. Golden once more flying in from midfield takes it off the backboard. Well, I'm going to do myself a solid and take credit for something you said there, Stage, and that they're giving Golden way too much space. And now in game two, here's a chance to exploit it. When you have a team win by so close, it is a really propensity for a team to put their hands down and go, great, but that championship hangover is easy to exploit. And that was Kansas doing right now. Championship hangover indeed. It just feels like CMU's having such a hard time getting up to the ball, even a bit of a fiasco in their own net just to get it to the corner. Maverick trying to challenge this 50 out gets beat diversity still holding on to possession chips it over top looking for one more on his team the demo bit of a free ball loose ball golden sets it out towards center one more pummeled on the net Gans in there to save it Gans in now desperation clear Oh, absolute desperation clear. They might find an opportunity, though. That kiddo in position looks for the double touch. Not going to quite pick it up. Golden clearing it out. Maverick still holds the midfield. A bit of a clumsy play again, but they have the slow play. Dribble over one and double commit, but a pinch downfield for KWU. Off oh, the backboard oh, and the double for Golden. When the ball went up, it was kind of like a slow motion thing. Ever seen suspense movie? Ever seen Psycho? This was the... Uh, 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 
and that is the number five. Call it the nickel. Kansas Wesleyan is a whole different team. It's a whole different game currently, Stage. I think if you're talking horror movies, man, this is absolutely the birds from Golden coming out of the sky when you least expect it. <laughs> Diversity now crossing over out to Golden. Golden's in position once more. Chips this up just over the crossbar. Nobody home to put that away. Get a bit of a clear now for CMU. Golden still trending, sending that back. Brodell could pick up the pass, leaving a little bit of extra room, though. That kiddo who gets super aggressive. But diversity there to pick up the whiff. Brodell out of net. Clumsy play, but the pinch sending it to safety for the moment. CMU is desperate to look for some kind of scoring opportunity here. That wasn't the best clear by Brodell, but it's very, very important you don't let one goal in. Because once you let one goal in, the confidence comes back. Here's your opportunity to, to completely erase the confidence CMU had in game one. You're about a goal or two away from doing that. Now, Novanto, what's the difference here if we see the scoreline stay steady? What's the difference between a 5-0 and a 5-1? Oh, diversity! <laughs> Well, that point's moot now, isn't it? With the assist by Golden, I'm about to go buy a Golden jersey from the club shop when it's all said and done. Six goals unanswered says a lot about your team. You start to wonder about your not only your individual ability, but rather if you pick the wrong strategy to begin with. I think uh, you talk about uh, Golden's performance this game, but uh, keeping it far away from a Golden goal. Seven nil from Golden here. Some people shoot balls in the goals, and this one is more of an escort. Lightly tap, rolled it over. How's it going? <laughs> Say hi to your mom for me. 7-0. Wow. We, we got the escort mission. What's next? The underwater? Are we going to Aquadome anytime soon? <laughs> it's horde mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maverick trying to get that one out. Diversity in position again. It doesn't stop. Brodell possibly looking for the chipper, but gives it out to Golden. Golden. Okay. This is Harlem Globetrotters, Novanta. Oh, yeah. Play the song. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Golden with the barrel roll like he's the Star Fox, or there's Star Fox to the bottom corner of the net. That was just savage. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Now, this is this is looking really, really rough. But Novanta, I mean, I, what's the difference between a blowout game like this or a game that puts one point on the scoreboard? How does it affect your next game? So that's one of the things you got a lot of the strong teams or a lot of teams were kind of a, a mid tier team will sit there and go, I can't believe this happened They get in their own head. And that begat some more mistakes. That's why I was saying, if you're Kansas, you don't want to let CMU score one at the same time, though, at this level, it's very common for teams to say, you know what, drop the game, clear the head, shake it out, make crack a couple knuckles and hit back. It's only one game. You're still in this. And now the series is level. Golden getting a little bit of a spicy trickle in off the goal line. That dive bomb didn't quite look like a doomsday dish, but you don't see that much anymore. The pace of play of Rocket League has evolved, and so has KWU from game one to game two. It was unfortunate that shot wasn't on target, but it was made on target with the own goal. But to, to further my last point, yeah, there's a point, though. You get you get nine score goals scored against you. You wonder, you know what? Can I shake my way away from this? Maverick going to pick that up, though. It sets you talking about getting that confidence back. Even if it's at the last 20 seconds, you know that you can punish these mistakes. The ball is just floating in front of their own net. Absolutely, Maverick is going to score. Absolutely, anybody from CMU will take that. It is a game of stopping the bleeding, stopping the hemorrhaging of concessions of goals for CMU. They want to get back to their winning ways. This game is all but lost, but you still have a lot more because the series is at worst level. Absolutely. Golden going up off the corner, out to Diversity. Diversity with a huge trap, but they are going to just let this one drop and end the suffering in game two. KWU with a dominant performance to make this series one-to-one. -one. Well, it wasn't pretty to see your best friend lose a fight, but the battle's not lost. See, game three is going to be pivotal for a whole other reason. We're level once again. If you're CMU, you scored the last goal of the game. Maybe you might use that momentum to your advantage. But if you are KWU, you must be feeling pretty good about yourself right now. That one-two punch of golden diversity is finally clicking, finally seeing it. And now we know why they're undefeated. Now, I gotta say, Novanta, this right here, this game in particular, feels like a Marvel origin story. This Ooh. feels like the kind of thing where uh, you've got the really big bout of adversity, 
and then suddenly maybe you get the super serum, maybe you get the gamma radiation, but something comes back and CMU explodes onto the scene. Right. Uh, that's definitely possible, but the difference here is between CMU's performance in game one and in game two is that Brodell took a more aggressive one-on-one -on -one approach with that kiddo. You cut off the engine in the mid pit, there is no supply of goals, and that has been the difference. So, Super Serum or not, that kiddo has to get more aggressive in game three. Absolutely. I felt like she was taken completely out of the game early on, and that kiddo was instrumental all of the assists or the goals were on her shoulders in game one. And I feel like if you want CMU to come back into this thing, game, that kiddo has to be an instrumental part of your rotation and your strategy. Yes, and that seems to be the linchpin here. Let's hopefully it works out for them in game three to make it a bit more competitive than the last one. Ganson just dishing out to Brodell. Great trap off the sidewall. Brodell with the air dribble looking to put this one away. Ganson with the save on the goal line. Looks like it could be a repeat of game two so far. Dynasty just, ch or Diversity chipping that one by, but not quite making it into the net just yet. Brodell out there as well. Good backboard defense by CMU. Maverick looking for a pass infield. Nobody's home just yet. Brodell chipping that one away. That kiddo in position will challenge. Nobody comes away with the ball just yet, but it does stay barely in CMU's side. One of the unspoken and unsung parts of Kansas Wesleyan strategy is their just dedication to starving the boost of CMU. This one here, I'm just noticing the only one that can actually go up high is that blue side because uh, when it comes to CMU, they have nothing to work with. Everything's been taken on the, on the big pills, the, the small pads, everything. And I think that just comes, oh, unfortunate whiff for CMU. Brodell just getting a squeaker by. Let's check out the angle, the finesse to get that one in. It's a little bit of a heartbreaker, but you got to give credit for Brodell to put that on frame despite the angle. And uh, yeah, those are kinds of goals I talk about when you get into your own head and make those mental mistakes. Absolutely. Those are kind of the heartbreakers, too. If you get just boomed for a million miles an hour, it doesn't feel all that bad. But when it's one that feels like it should be saveable, it's just the mind games. Oh, no! The corner just barely knocking that one away. Ganson had the opportunity, thought he could walk away from the explosion. And now Golden gets the counterattack to make it a 2-0 game. So Ged had a plan that was perfect and all but execution. Just a little bit wide of frame and opened them up to a counterattack talk about heartbreaking goals well that's two back to back there stage absolutely one of the big things that you need to just avoid the best game came from cmu punishing a mistake from kwu but now it's just all the mistakes seem to be openings that cmu are creating for themselves if you close that up reduce the unforced errors you've suddenly got a goal just like that that maverick brings to the table yeah, all the goals here in this game has been an issue of taking some mistake your opponent done and, and totally punishing for them. And I got to start to wonder, can these strong teams stay strong? Can a team that scored nine goals in the last game allow themselves to have open shots on that quite like that? I'm wondering what's going on, especially on the Kansas side. I got to hear their comms at some point. I got to just think about, you know, who are you? Where are you talking? Where are you saying, all right, I'm going to be centering this one. I'm going to push it off left. Or is it just kind of like, all right, we're shutting up, we're just playing the game, we're vibing, we got our music on? <laughs> right. Well, I'm usually in the second camp, and that's why no one can hear me on my comms. <laughs> <Never> <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> Speaking of pay attention, Golden chipping this one in field. He's oh. going to be walking away with it. The bomb off of the corner once more. By the skin of teeth. Up, I guess you call it a ceiling shot or a wall shot. It's both, y'all. 3-1, <laughs> Kansas Wesleyan. That's the, uh, I call it the angled waterfall. Uh, you can go ahead and, you know, trademark that. It'll catch on in a couple of years. Trust me. Believe it. <laughs> All right. Diversity here trying to set this one up once more. CMU still on their back foot. Ganzen setting it into midfield. But Brodell is already there to chip it away. Brodell with the dive bomb play now, but Ganzen there to break it up. Gets it deep into KMU si KW side but no target is found just yet. And Diversity looking to close this one out, not finding it just yet. And a slow recovery opens the door to a huge counterattack for CMU. Yeah, that second game, I'm telling you, got into the head of CMU. That's two shots from Ganson that was wide of goal. And sometimes you're not feeling it. That goal could be as wide as a, as a thimble. 
Oh yeah, the open goals are a huge problem when you've got the nerves going, or even just if you're a player who's notorious for missing them, like uh, a certain pro player who will remain unnamed. <laughs> I wouldn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Gans in there, good save, double save, taken away from Brodell who wants the alley-oop. Gans in now chasing that one downfield, off the backboard, will there be a play for KWU? This one here is the most critical time for CM. You're only down by two goals. You have a little less than two minutes to go. And that could have been a shot on goal on a platter for them. Again, they were denied. This is what you need to do. You can claw yourself back. You can force an overtime or even come away with the win. But it has to start now. Maverick almost getting the flip reset off that, but playing it nice and safe. Out to that kiddo, that kiddo now in towards midfield. Golden has control, has the ball, looking to get a little fancy with it, but not going to do anything, just playing nice and patient. I love this from KWU. They're ahead. You don't need to do anything fancy. You don't need to do anything insane. All you have to do is run the clock down and keep starving that boost. Yeah, you see Golden with the ball on top of the fender. <laughs> I was going to say, walking with the dagger behind the back, but doesn't matter. Diversity has it, too. With a little over a minute to go, three goals seems pretty insurmountable the way these two teams are playing. It's not impossible, but this challenge may be a lot for any team to come back from, especially CMU, which are currently on the ropes. Definitely on the ropes, seeing double at this point. It just feels like KWU is all over the pitch. Yeah, even bumping it out there, Brodell taken out of the backfield. The shots are not on target. They're trying to stretch the zone defense, but there's not enough power to force people to rotate out of the safe zone they want to be playing in. Not enough power to force the double commit, and diversity will widen the gap even more. So look at this play here. This one here was a shot by Golden, but it draws the defense to the right, except for Gans, who goes left to cover the other side. But the thing is, two players were out of position, and that one, if it didn't even was on target, which it was, would give Diversity another extra moment to do a follow-up or rebound. Now, I do have to give credit to Ganzen and to CMU over all of that, though, because even though the execution didn't pan out, the idea of that play was right. You know, you've got somebody moving, you're trusting your team, you've got the rotation set up, you just couldn't keep it out of the net. No doubt in my mind, Sage, I do think CMU has a lot of great plays and great tactics. It's just not working for them currently. It's not all is not lost, though. I do think there's some time for them to put some more scores and games on the board, but it is kind of heartbreaking to see. Golden here showboating air dribble shot from midfield just absolutely in control here I love those inverted shots they're not difficult but they just look so much more graceful I would not do that myself <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say they're not difficult as compared to like the flip reset double musty freestyle stuff but they're right. still uh they, they still take some skill to do all right, closing this game out, though, it looks like Golden's going to let that one drop after a catch. GG's are called 2-1 now in favor of KWU. We've talked about the adjustments that you need to see, but if you just had one concept, you know, mechanics, team play, pace, style, what is it that you want to see out of CMU to g give us an equalizer here, Novanta? And it does feel like, especially in this third game, that Maverick and that kid are occupying the same space. They may have to give themselves more space. I never talked about the first couple games. There was too much space among everyone on the pitch. I do think that uh, with Maverick and that kid, the way they're both good at passing the ball around, maybe that may confuse or split the defense and, and give themselves some opportunities to score. I, but I will say this. I am running out of ideas because the way KW is playing, it looks like it's inferred that the next game will have a similar result unless something drastic changes. Here's what I think you need to be doing. I want to see Maverick start kind of living up to their name a little bit. Maverick going out there and being a bit of a bully. And I say that in every single series, but there's a reason for it this time. I feel like just based on the style of play, based, excuse me, based on the tempo that we're seeing and how much he's being taken out of the play, I feel like that kiddo is a little bit on tilt. So okay. one getting out there and just booming some people and bullying them helps that a lot. But two, you got to start cracking jokes about it. You got to start making this game feel like fun. And that brings okay. everybody up in the game and makes them start playing happier and faster. Take a note that stage is pro road rage has five minutes on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead and send them to the chop shop. That's the way you win. <laughs> 
All right, Gans in there. Get the 50-50. That kiddo unfortunately whiffing this one once more. And Maverick taking up the side. Looking to center that one up. Gans in. Oh, forcing the own goal. Bar down and off of one player from KWU. Well, you said aggressive. Doesn't get more aggressive than that. What a stomp, a boot, and says, I'm going to score this one. Like it or not. All right, now here's the important thing though. I don't know if you uh, watch any like high level 1v1s or anything that, but you've got to have the intimidation factor. You've got to have the joke, the tagline afterwards. You've got to treat it like an action movie star. So what's your tagline after a play like that? What does this button do? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, speaking of what does this button do, it looks like we've got an actual switch here from KWU Icy coming onto the pitch. Haven't seen them here before. Diversity chips this one infield. Gans in there to pick it up. Missing the second touch. Icy there to send it back into CMU's field. And this time, Icy losing the 50-50 goes out to the midfield. KWU has to get this clear. They're already down a point. It's interesting the, the personnel change because the other roster is working so well. Maybe there's a situation of Icy needing more playing time. Uh, definitely a bold move. Let's hope it doesn't cost them anything. But Diversity here coming off the backboard, getting the shot in. Diversity, if you've got Icy on the team, you got to stay frosty, and that's what we do here. Ice to meet you. Yes, we're now level 1-1 one, one, as we get to go. <laughs> Novanta, you can't do this to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off the kickoff here, Ganson out to Maverick. Maverick chipping this into no man's land, and Icy is there to pick it up and forcing a bit of a glacial play, but Golden here picks it up off the back wall. What a save from that kiddo. That kiddo coming back into the play with some heat and fire. Ganzen moves out to midfield. They've got to get this one away once more. Maverick chips it into the crossbar. This is not on target yet. They're still trying to stretch the zone. KW looking for these opportunities. Ganzen out to Maverick. That kiddo playing third back and Trying to get that out of the net, at least stopping it. Once more, Ganzen not able to Gibbs that one away. And Icy setting this one up for a lead. What a hard stopping exchange. That was what, two, three, four, maybe even five attempts at goal. The levy was going to eventually break, but it was a spectacular commitment to giving yourself rebounds to make that goal a possibility. You say the levy's going to break, and that's exactly what we're seeing. The floodwaters of shots from KWU are rising. They already have 10 shots on the board, and even with only two goals, there's only one shot for CMU. The pressure is high. It's pressure is high, and you're seeing a lot more when a ball goes in the CMU side. All the players, I will say, commit, and that leaves you open for shots like that. See, that shot couldn't even, shouldn't have even gone off, but it did from Golden out of nowhere, and they were hapless to stop it. 3-1, Kansas. All right, with Golden having made that goal and with the immense gameplay from game two, I think that Golden is definitely the player to beat here. Golden is absolutely the threat that you've got to keep an eye on. You've got to get someone to mark him out. Ganzen. Taking it off the backboard, good play, but once again, stolen by Golden Maverick, getting beat out that kiddo on the close rotation and Golden just finding the open net off the pass and the double rotate. Look, there's no doubt in my mind, if you made a poster featuring these cars for the school, Golden would probably be front and center, but Diversity has done the dirt work of being the most aggressive person on the pitch or automobile on the pitch and serving up opportunities for Golden too. So it really is a one-two punch, a stealthy one at that. Ooh, Maverick, nice little twist there to get a little momentum on the ball, but that's just directly out to Golden. Ganzen in position to clear that one away from the net and following it up off the ceiling. Nobody home to pick it up, though, and now Golden free flying, free falling. Ganzen manages to steal it away at the last second. I love the music reference. Here's a chance for CMU, though. Uh, it was kind of a... a a fall of attempt of a goal and they get another one. Yeah, see, like I was going to say, there was kind of a lapse in judgment here from Kansas Wesleyan and it was easily punished by CMU. They still have a chance at this one. And this is what we were talking about way earlier in the series. CMU is willing to take these mistakes, willing to take the unforced errors and run with them. And that was not a trivial shot to make either. Out of the corner, that is a tight, 
angle. Ganzen going up stylish, looking for the double touch off the backboard. Not going to find that one away. Golden gets the clear before Maverick can come in. Now Maverick, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, picks this one up, gets the corner boost as well. He's going to be making this solid play. Icy there to challenge it, though. Diversity not picking this one up. Golden out in the midfield. Diversity plays it slow. Oh, that is just mean. It's not on target yet, but you force such a rotation. So many commits. I don't know how you so cross somebody up with an octane, but I just saw it happen. Broken ankle. <laughs> I, I don't know how you do that either, but that is definitely what we saw. Ankles and axles were broken. <laughs> Coming out of the corner here, KWU holding that pressure. They still have the lead. They still have the clock, but they are still relentless here. I see way big fly off the backfield out towards Golden. Golden just gets the cherry pick for the icing on the cake. Here's a shot here that as a defender, you have two options. You don't think it's going to be touched by Golden. So you're still eyeing the trajectory from IC, and it leaves you open for the redirect. That was a tough one to be in. And I could tell you nine times out of 10, I would have whiffed that one myself. But yet the result's the same. 5-2 Kansas Wesleyan. Novanta, you know the uh, cartoons where you get the, like the little birds around your head when you get confused or stunned? Yeah. Uh, just watching this play and trying to put myself in the shoes of CMU, I'm getting those birds around my head, man. I, I don't know how I would be able to play this. The double demo play from Diversity. Talking about that aggression, a miracle save from that kiddo able to rotate in in time. Well, you got to put yourself in CMU's shoes. You, it's week five of the season. You have been untouched. You're undefeated. And you win the first game. But ever since that, you may feel like you've been hustled and bamboozled by a team that is on paper just as strong as you are. So frustration might be setting in, understanding what went wrong. I'm sure they're going to watch the replays and the training next week. A lot of questions to be answered. Absolutely. This feels like pool sharking. Diversity tries for the drill play, gets challenged out by Ganzen. Ganzen not able to find the move in towards net. Golden wins the 50-50, and that should just be the nail in the coffin. Maybe one more opportunity. Golden, yes. very smart positioning, trying to dunk that away. Not going to be anything off of that play. Diversity sends it to midfield once more. One more opportunity just for the style points as KWU will take this series. KWU takes this series in emphatic and lopsided fashion. Well-earned, well-deserved, even with the substitution, made short work in dispatching CMU tonight. Definitely some short work, but again, I've got to hand it to CMU. If I were in their position, I would have done a thousand times worse. They put up a really good fight. They played quickly. It's just a matter of when KWU is putting on the afterburners, your regular impulse engines aren't going to take care of the job. Yeah, absolutely. It really was a turn up of tempo and aggression and speed from KWU. And what we saw was CMU did not want to spread out to go to a man-to-man -man or car-to-car -car defense. They tried to play zonal, and that was your downfall. I think it's a simple change, but at the same time, that team, KWU, is so unique. You start to wonder if you're CMU, is it worth coming up with a whole new strategy for this one squad? And, well, if they see these, if these teams meet again in the playoffs, we'll know what they'll have to do to get this one and win in their column. Now, Novanta, I got to say the important part and the unspoken piece about having two teams on your roster means you get a whole nother set of brains to bounce ideas off of. You've got people that are there rooting for you. And even if you take the L like CMU did this week, you've still got people that you can say, hey, do we need to change our strategy or were we just outplayed? Were we just too slow? What do we got to do? And then the other team comes in and says, hey, we play this too. We know the game just as well as you do. This is what we think. Yeah, and, it, and that's what makes this game so great and so challenging because by any other metric, CMU is a phenomenal squad. They got outplayed today. I do think if I were a coach, I would say keep on doing what you're doing, but I know there's that human nature to go and blow up everything and try new tactics so you want to be world beaters, but it just wasn't your night. All right, so oh, with that in mind, though, that is the end of the action between KWU and CMU for this evening. We do have more exciting Rocket League action, but I'm not entirely certain. Are we going to be getting an interview in for this Novanta? I hope we do. I think I think today's win showed that KWU is here to stay and will be a formidable squad. Uh, I think uh, our producers are trying to arrange that currently. Uh, but if we don't, but that's okay too because they are, put it all in the field. We knew exactly what they came to do and they made it happen in four games.
All right. I don't think we're going to have an interview. It's uh, kind of the strong, silent treatment here. You're just going to have to go away from tonight with the enigma that is the roster of Kansas Wesleyan. But with that in mind, I'm staged. With me has been Novanta, the golden goal of the casting scene. And I can't wait to see more NECC Rocket League action coming up. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.